Conditions for electrostatics. Pretty much, no matter what we do in electromagnetics, we will always start with Maxwell's equations, which if you recall, is actually an incomplete description of classical electromagnetics. We also need the constitutive relations and even the Lorentz force law. Lorentz force law is not something we're talking about right now, so we just have Maxwell's equations. And allow me to be a little bit lazy, and when I say Maxwell's equations, I'm also including the constitutive relations. Here we're talking about electrostatics. That means everything is still, nothing is changing with time. So if nothing changes with time, these two derivative terms, which is calculating the change of B and the change of D with respect to time, those have to be zero. So to describe electrostatics, we need to cross those off. Now, if we stare at these equations long enough, what we'll see is that our Maxwell's equations and constitutive relations have now separated into two independent sets of equations. The first set is describing electrostatics. And we see we have the curl of E equals zero, divergence of D equals rho V, and we have the constitutive relations for the electric fields. The remaining three equations we'll talk about later, and those cover magnetostatic equations. But for the time being, we're starting with these first three equations, which as we'll see, describes all of electrostatics. Let's look at these equations in a little bit more detail. The first one was Faraday's law. Since we set that derivative term equal to zero, is this still Faraday's law? Well, it's Faraday's law for electrostatics. And what it's saying is the curl of the electric field intensity E has to be zero. So if the electric field has no curl, that means the electric field cannot form loops. It is irrotational and has to essentially form straight lines. Now those straight lines can bend a little bit like what we're seeing over on the right, but they're essentially straight, they're not loops. If we move on to Gauss's law, what we see is that the divergence of the electric flux D is proportional to the charge density rho V. And if we think of the signs, what we'll see is that the electric flux will diverge from positive charges and they will converge to negative charges. So in electrostatics, the electric flux must have a beginning and an end. So it has to start on a charge and end on a charge. So that always has to be. And in fact, we could argue if there is no charge, there are no electric fields in statics. And last, the constitutive relation. That is essentially just saying the electric flux is proportional to the electric field intensity scaled by that constant epsilon, or it's the permittivity. The square brackets here implies that this can also be an anisotropic term. And if you remember our discussion there, that means that the electric flux can actually be in a different direction than the electric field intensity. For this course, we're really just going to treat permittivity as a scalar quantity. And so D and E will be in the same direction. But in general, that's not true. The last conclusion here is notice the permeability does not appear anywhere in the equations describing electrostatics. That means for static fields, the electric fields do not see permeability at all. So no matter what the permeability is, the electric fields will behave independent of that.